The word fibrous refers to connective tissue, and dysplasia usually refers to the presence of abnormal cells or tissues. Thus, fibrous dysplasia is a rare bone disorder characterized by the replacement of normal bone with fibrous connective tissue. This condition can manifest in the jaws with a distinct ground glass radiographic appearance. Fibrous dysplasia arises from a mutation in the GNAS gene, which encodes a protein that regulates many other genes. The mutation influences the osteoblasts, which are the bone-forming cells, resulting in an excessive production of fibrous tissue. In typical bone remodeling, old bone is broken down and replaced with new bone. However, in fibrous dysplasia, this process is disrupted causing the bone to be substituted with abnormal fibrous tissue instead of normal new bone. This abnormal tissue lacks the strength and robustness of normal bone, leading to increased susceptibilities to deformities, weaknesses, and fractures. Patients with fibrous dysplasia might exhibit noticeable facial asymmetry, with one side more pronounced due to bone swelling. This growth can lead to pain and may even displace teeth, sometimes resulting in them becoming loose. As the dysplastic bone reshapes, it can induce a malocclusion, where the alignment of the teeth is affected. In some instances, the weakened bone structure is prone to fractures. Additionally, a tingling or numbness may arise if the lesion encroaches on nerve pathways. Beyond the bone, the skin may show light brown patches. Children and adolescents are primarily affected by fibrous dysplasia. The root cause of this condition is a mutation that transpires early during fetal development, leading its signs to often become evident during these growing years. Females tend to show a higher incidence of fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia presents in various forms based on the number and location of the bones affected. The monostotic type affects a single bone and represents the majority of cases, commonly involving the ribs, femur, or craniofacial bones. In contrast, the polystotic type affects multiple bones and is often diagnosed in childhood, typically presenting in an asymmetrical pattern. Diagnosing fibrous dysplasia in a dental setting requires a multifaceted approach. It starts with a detailed patient history, focusing on the onset and progression of symptoms. This is followed by clinical examination, where the professional or the clinician evaluates signs such as jaw anomalies, facial asymmetries, and tooth displacement. Radiographic assessment is the next crucial step. Tools like panoramic and periapical radiographs highlight the condition's characteristic ground glass appearance in the jaws. For a more granular view, comb beam CT scans map out the depth and spread of the dysplasia within the jaw structures. To differentiate fibrous dysplasia from other conditions, a biopsy is essential. Microscopic analysis of the tissue sample typically reveals woven bone trabeculae within fibrous tissue, a hallmark of this condition. Although fibrous dysplasia lacks a complete cure, treatments effectively manage its symptoms and enhance oral function and appearance. When addressing fibrous dysplasia, treatment modalities span both non-surgical and surgical realms. Non-surgically, medications like bisphosphonates alleviate bone pain and boost bone density. Surgically, significant bone expansions are often addressed with bone contouring which entails reshaping or selectively removing bone to achieve a desired anatomical structure. In advanced cases, bone grafting becomes necessary, particularly if dental implants are on the horizon. For teeth with compromised vitality, endodontic treatment may be indicated. To summarize, fibrous dysplasia caused by a GNAS gene mutation, replaces normal bone with fibrous tissue. This is evident as a ground glass appearance on radiography.
Typically affecting children and young adults, especially females, it is classified as monostotic or polystotic. In dentistry, diagnosis usually involves history taking, examination, radiographs and biopsy. Treatment, while not curative, manages symptoms through medications and surgery.